And you can see we've got a bunch of active hives right behind us, don't we? No, it's been pretty risky. I say, we wanted to take some video of our animals, and the bees are one of our animals, aren't they? How many bees do you think are in that one hive right there? A thousand or a hundred. There's closer to about 40,000 in that hive. What? Yeah, 40,000 bees in that hive, and that's not a big hive. Because we do have a couple of hives that probably are closer to 60,000. And you can 000. see, if you get closer way over there, you can see an there be one over there. Yeah. Now, there's about 20 hives out here in this bee yard. Well, Morgan, should we go ahead and go in the shop and see what's actually inside these hives? Because it's 100 degrees out here, and it's getting kind of late in the day. And I don't think we're going to take a real beehive apart for this video because they'll be a little cranky right now. But I've got one set up in the shop and we'll show you all the parts. Look what I got. Yep, Morgan, we set up this hive in here in the shop, didn't we? Yeah. Obviously, there's no bees in it because we're in the shop. But we're going to use this to show you exactly what goes into these hives because I know a lot of people have probably seen these going down the road, but you never really knew what was in them. See, one way, one thing we do, we even have these tags down here. You see this, Morgan? Yep. And that way, we can keep records of what happens in each one of these colonies. Like I say, this would be colony 23. But right now, it's empty. So, let's go ahead and start disassembling. Mm -hmm. This top part is called a telescoping cover. Because it goes around the hive. You want to go ahead and take this off, Morgan? Yeah, but... Once you put bees in here, you have tons of honey tomorrow. Yeah. Well, it takes a little longer than tomorrow, but you also have to use a lot more equipment if you got bees. Now, on the telescoping cover lids, there's another inner cover in here. You want to show them what the inner cover looks like? Hold it up for them. What that's for is that telescoping cover wraps around. So if you didn't put that inner cover on, the bees could use, they do the thing called propolizing, which is really sticky. You've seen me have to pry things apart before. Yeah. And it will stick the cover down. So there's no way to pry on that telescoping cover, so you have to use a inner cover like that to allow you to easily disassemble the top of the hive. Now, what's coming up next, these two boxes here are what you generally call your honey super. They're a medium-sized box. You want to go ahead and pull one of those frames out? Well, set this one down. See, Morgan knows how to handle these. He's handled this stuff. Yeah, I handled tons of bees. Go ahead and pull this frame out. See, this, these have ten of those frames in them. Yes, and they're so long, we could have tons of bunnies. Now, each one of these is going to weigh about probably seven pounds when it's full of honey. So this works out to be somewhere between 60 and 70 pounds for one of these boxes when it's full of honey. Yep. That's the reason we don't put honey in these big boxes, because they'll weigh 90 to 100 pounds. And, well, we don't want to lift that. Got that one? Next part. See? Now, this is the brood box. This is where, where the, the bees live. They lay their eggs. They store their pollen. Water ones. And you see how much bigger these frames are. Yeah, you're going to show the comparison. You see, because this frame will hold about 7 pounds of honey. This one is 11 to 12 pounds of honey. Now, the reason, a lot of times the honey doesn't go all the way across. That's the reason you never get max honey. All right, you want to go ahead and set this and all? And generally, on a good year, you can keep your colony size up to two brood boxes size. And at the bottom, we have a bottom board. You see this bottom, see this screen down here? Some people use this screen bottom board like this. Now, it's not necessary. I don't find it necessary even in our southeast Oklahoma heat. I, like, I kind of prefer solid bottom boards that look more like this. Now, I don't mind this ramp on the front, though. I kind of like it. It's more, that ramp is more aesthetic, though. So but, this can just lay on it? Uh-huh. This one has a lip on it. Let's go ahead and put that, that one on the floor. Let's show them what this looks like. See, if you have this, you can grab a brood box. It'll look like this when you, with this. It's not as fancy as that one, but this, the bees don't gripe. I've never had a bee complain that something didn't look pretty. 
this is, All right. this is heavy. Now these hives are also are called Langstroth hives. But what happens if you put two? That'd be pretty silly. Yeah, it doesn't work real well. Yeah. But these are called Langstroth hives, and they're commonly used in commercial and hobby beekeeping. You know, a hobbyist may have just three or four hives. A commercial beekeeper may have a thousand of these. And these were these hives. The idea was actually invented and patented in the 1850s. That's how long we've been using this technology. All right, Morgan. Is there anything else you think we need to tell them? No. So you want to reassemble the hive? Yeah.